Okay, so next I'm gonna show you how to take this over. So let's say you don't have Massive, or let's say you don't wanna be loading up an instrument of Massive every single time you do sub bass. You can use Ableton's sampler to do exactly the same thing, or even Ableton's simpler. So in this case, I'm gonna be using Ableton's sampler. I love using that uh, instrument. It's a great, great sampler built right into Ableton. And so we're going to export a sine wave from Massive and we're going to use that in Ableton Sampler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my mappings here because I really just want the straight sound wave. So I'm just going to go off and go off. So I'm going to get just the straight up sine wave. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create a sub bass sample that I can export and I can use in other projects in Ableton Sampler or Simpler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this 8-bar loop in the Massive that we're using and I'm going to go to Ableton's Export menu and I'm going to Export Audio. Now the settings that we use here are going to be important. So what I want to be doing here, first of all, I'm going to be using the Normalize function on because I want it to be maximum volume. I'm going to use a WAV file. I'm going to select Convert to Mono on because sub bass should all be done in mono. Sample rate, I am going to crank up our sample rate to 48 and 24 bit depth. I don't need an analysis file and I'm going to go OK. Now it's going to ask me where to save it. I have my own sample library here. And one thing that's very important to do is to always name your root key. Because when you're importing audio samples into a sampler, you need to indicate what the root key is so it'll play in the proper pitch. So in this case, I'm using, I know C1 is my root key that I've played. So massive sub bass C1 as the root key. And then I click Save. And it's created the audio file. So now what I can do is I can delete this instance of massive and I can use an Ableton sampler. So I'm going to go up to Instruments. I'm going to bring in Sampler here. Now I'm going to go over to my audio samples and I'm going to find that sample where I saved it in here in Synths and Subbase. There's my massive Subbase patch. Okay, I'm going to bring this in and you'll see now here it's asking me what the root key is. So I type in C1 as my root key. Good, now you can see the samples playing properly. You can see in my in my sampler I've set the interpolation by default to best. I always want to make sure I'm using the highest quality settings. So I'm using that. Now a couple things in sampler you'll want to set up here. First of all is the sustain mode. So let's say that you're playing this sample. I'd recorded the sample at 100 BPM and but say for example I'm playing the sample as a, a higher pitch or I'm playing the sample in a faster or slower track when this sample is done playing it's gonna stop but if I want a sustained bass note that's longer than that I need to choose a sustain mode the default sustain mode here is to play the sample and stop we have two other sustain modes one is to play the sample and then play it again from the beginning the other is to play the sample and then play it in reverse so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the sample and then play it again in reverse and we'll see how that sounds. Next we can go to the modulation section and choose the same types of modulations that we had with Massive using the pitch envelope and the LFO. So we click over to modulation and we'll start with the LFO. So we select LFO1, we turn it on and you can see right here we have a LFO1 to pitch amount and it's done as a percentage, so we're going to do this and we're going to have a listen to it. And you can see also it's a little slow, so we're going to speed up the LFO. And my policy with this is I put it so it's just audible and then I back it off a bit. So around 2% there is what I'm going to use. Then we click over to the pitch oscillator section 
and you'll see here we have our pitch envelope. And our pitch envelope here it's set up and we can just dial in the amount here in semitones. You can see we don't need to change the pitch envelope settings. It's actually set pretty much the way I want it right from the beginning, but we just want to change the amount of semitones that we're working with here. Perfect. Now, let's say I want to change some of these settings on the fly and I don't want to dial into all of the samplers menus to be able to get at this. An easy way to do that is actually to convert this to an instrument rack. So you can convert it to an instrument rack by right clicking and going group or pressing command G on the Mac. And what this gives us is access to macros. Macros are sweet. I love macros and they allow us to control internal parameters from sampler from these eight basic knobs right here. So what I'm going to macro is I'm going to macro this pitch envelope amount so that I can control a parameter I'm just going to call thump. So I go map mode, I click on amount, I map to this macro one. I can rename this by pressing command and R. I'm going to call this thump. Now the other beautiful thing I can do here is you'll see by default it gives me the full range available from minus 48 semitones to plus 48 semitones. That's way too much. I'm going to manually enter this and have the minimum be zero semitones and the maximum be 24. Now I'm going to exit MIDI mapping mode and we're just going to dial this in and see how this sounds. So here's, here's nothing and here's it maxed out. Okay, so we had it, I think, set at about 10, so that's about midway up the knob, and there we go, we're sounding good. So the other parameters that we had was the LFO. So now we're going to enter the map mode. This is internal map mode within the instrument rack. This is different from the regular MIDI mapping mode in live. And we're going to macro the pitch amount for LFO1, and then the LFO frequency to another. And then we're going to rename these so we know what these are. So this is pitch and this is LFO rate. And again we're going to edit the ranges here. So pitch we're going to go from 0 and we're going to go maximum 10%. We're not going to go too crazy. And then pitch envelope or rather LFO rate we're going to go from 0 basically 0, 0 0.01 and the maximum we're going to go to is going to be 5 Hertz. We exit map mode and again let's listen to this. Let's take the pitch amount up, make it extreme so we can hear what we're doing. Now let's say hmm, that's not quite fast enough on the LFO rate so we're going to max that out actually at 10 Hertz. Exit map mode Let's listen to it again. And now that we've spent this time to create our sub bass patch, we want to save this for future use. So we're going to rename this. In this case, I'm going to call it Vespers sub bass and we are going to click save on the instrument rack. Notice there's a save function here on the sampler. We're not going to press that because we want to save this rack with its mappings as a whole. So we're going to click the save button and you'll notice now within our instruments area under instrument rack in the device browser it's now saved Vesper's sub bass. I can now recall this for any future project and it saves the sample with the uh, with the item as well. So I can load this into any future project that I want to and it will bring my sub bass patch in so it makes future projects a lot easier to work with. So that wraps things up guys. This is a tutorial on sub bass and I am Vespers, an Ableton Live certified trainer. And if you guys want to follow what I'm up to, keep up to date with the updates, please subscribe to the channel. I do about a video a week and I have a Facebook fan page, a Twitter account, SoundCloud account, and an email newsletter which you can hop onto at www.vespers.ca.